tonight on the weekly R&R. &R. This July 4th weekend, make sure to stay safe and don't blow any fingers off. Did you do something with your hair? Cool, great, awesome. What's up? Welcome to the Weekly R&R, &R, where you get your rest and relaxation while we recap. And then we review. That's correct. It's we true do, we do. do. It's true we do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is my buddy Link. And that is Gutter. hey ooh. hey -oh. So. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's run down the list. First. This is sure to be trendy. So here we go. Um, confirmed okay. recently. The news of Wreck-It Ralph 2. I'm surprised that wasn't confirmed opening weekend of Wreck-It Ralph 1. You know why what I mean? You, why do you say that? Because it was so damn successful, and it's Disney. If they see anything that's even close to printing money, they're going to take advantage of them. With a Disney model? Superheroes, Star Wars? Just Ex un exactly. Un unlimited Wouldn't be number surprised of if that happened. What was the last one? Last year? Earlier this year? Had to be last year, right? 2015? Oh, it was a little Probably. while ago. 2014? Right? 2012. 2012? 2012. Holy shit, I was way off. I was way off. So Wreck-It Ralph 1 came out in 2012, and this new one's not going to come out until March of 2018. But instead of being centered around arcade games and going from one to another, he's going to be involved with the internet as a whole. Oh boy. Which I'm assuming means viral videos, memes, which is going to run yeah. wild. It'll the probably be a very clear period piece of not 2018. <laughs> Cause think about it, because they have to start writing it now. Yes. They have to start creating it and... And they can't really change the script once they've made the millions of dollars of CG animation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those gags are going to be played out by now. I know there's a special place in your heart for the very short-lived Harlem Shake because, yeah, because Harlem you Shake. caught on to it in the early stages of it. That's true. This is a lot of what <laughs> this is going to be like. If, if your prediction is any indication that's going to be centered around what's trending on the internet at the time, there's no way that it will be in any way relevant. The internet is constantly changing. There's always new stupid trends coming up. There's no way you can predict or... Let alone capitalize on it. I don't know, if they have a snapshot of like the mid 2000s where he's a flash game and they're focusing in on that era. If they're making it a period piece like the way they did with the arcade games of the 80s, mm. like they did with the original Rick and Ralph, if that's the case, then I think it'll be great. If they Otherwise, focus in on internet trends of a specific year? If they try to make it present day of whatever present day they're writing it for, it's going to flop. That's all you can do, basically, once they have it written, is it's going to be jokes that are relative to years past. Like nostalgic viral things. Yep. As opposed to anything current, because it's impossible to keep up. You know, in theory, I actually think it will be funny and entertaining if they if they could pull it off correctly. Yeah. Because of the internet, it's where you go for funny, silly things. Was it Sum Forty One just came out with a music video? Mm -hmm. Bunch of viral references. It's funny, like the band's just playing in front of like a construction site or something. But then there's just like all this little stuff stuff going on around them, kind of like the Weezer video for Pork and Beans. Pork and Beans, yeah. It's just. Like, all the, the, the big notable things throughout time. It's like, you can, I could see them doing the same thing with that. And I actually think that would be funny, as long as they just don't rehash it in a boring manner. Next! While taking a screenshot of his computer for a tutorial, a Valve employee accidentally leaked the existence of Left 4 Dead 3. A game that many have wanted for years. Rumors abound, of course, of its development. Now that they saw it on somebody's desktop that works for Valve and a little folder marked Left 4 Dead 3, you know, that's enough for people to run off and completely speculate that it's coming. And start their pre-orders already. So what can you do? We have this information. Oh my god, Left 4 Dead 3. We have nothing else other than a folder on a screenshot mm -hmm. that says the word Left 4 Dead 3. Mm -hmm. What if he just had some ideas and he was looking to pitch it? And it's not actually been approved to start working as a project yet. It would still be progress. It would still be a story that means somebody out there does want it. If he is an actual Valve employee, that means he has connections to people. It's a game people want. You know, people adored the first one. Mm -hmm. Second one came out kind of quick right after that. I mean, they've been wanting a third one for God knows how long now. And now with a new generation of gaming systems, you know? You know, why not? Maybe the time is right. Maybe it's just because I haven't seen anything tangible other than a screenshot of a folder. But, like, what is there more to see? 
we don't know yet. Mm. I mean, you get up to four player co-op zombie slaughter, you know, what else? What else do you need? Either way, that probably won't be out for quite a while. Next! So, just this past week, Fergie released a song and video for MILF Money. Heard you in the mood for a little MILF shake. Come on in the front door, leaving at the back door. Me and the girls up in the club, hating assholes. All my girls on fleek, cause we You got that milk money. I got that, I got that, I got that milk money. I've been wearing this so I'll tell you where the new ideas are. They're in Hollywood. Have you seen the trailer for Swiss Army Man? Oh my god. What in the hell is that? Do you know what I'm talking about? I've, I've seen Paul the Dano, trailers. Daniel Radcliffe. There's a dude stranded on a desert island, Paul Dano, and he's about to commit suicide but sees a corpse wash up on the beach, mm -hmm. Daniel Radcliffe. And he thinks it's a, he still goes up to it. Um, and apparently it still has the ability to fart. So he's like, oh my God, he's alive. But then he's not, but he kind of still has the ability to fart. Apparently he's supernatural and the entire story is driven by farts because he escapes, Paul Dano escapes the island, riding Daniel Radcliffe like a jet ski, powered by his farts. Don't say Hollywood doesn't ever have original ideas, because there you go. There's nothing along those lines. But anyway, the, the funny thing about that Swiss Army Man was you said, like some actors would like to do their own action scenes, they'll do their own stunts, you know, they'll do their own sex scenes, whether or not it's awkward or, or, or not, if they've done it enough times. Mm -hmm. But you were saying Daniel Radcliffe actually wanted to do his own fart scenes, correct? Yeah, they made a dummy to put in place of Radcliffe for a lot of these scenes. Mm. And he wanted to do all of his own stunts. He wanted to do the weird parts of the movie, which I imagine would be all of them. What? So a movie theater in Concord, California has apologized after they opened a showing of Finding Dory with a trailer for Sausage Party, the rated R animated film from Seth Rogen and Friends. So we talked about before recording here, whether or not it was the red band trailer or the green band. And I said it had to be green. Because how often do you see red band trailers in theaters with mass audience? Red band, you know, you could see privately mm -hmm. if you, you know, go and search it out. I, I see red band trailers with, if I'm seeing an R-rated movie. Yeah, that would make sense. Right, so I don't know, so there's no confirmation either way. But I think the content and the subject matter of the movie, especially when the trailer turns mm -hmm. violent yes. at the potato part... Almost with doesn't the, matter which right when the swearing is included is. or not is is irrelevant to the scarring the kids will have. You kind of get the point of what kind of movie it is. After oh yeah, you see it either way. It leads up so innocently. Sausage party. It <laughs> before they watch Finding Dory. That's hilarious. It, that's it's, comedy. It's it's amazing juxtaposition and amazing promotion for the movie. Yes. <laughs> That's good, clean, family fun right there. It really is. <laughs> and this has been another good, clean, family fun episode of the Weekly R&R. Isn't it always? Don't blow your arms off this weekend. Yeah, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week, and we'll also see you in Concord, California. Strapped to an M80. Waiting to see Finding Dory. <laughs> while Fergie plays in the background. Ugh. I mean, I got the volume all the way down, but you know, the video wasn't bad. Final words? Bye, everybody. Eat your bootios.